Hello everyone. So what we're going to do in this video is study a related rates problem. So these are problems that involve calculating the rate of change of a certain quantity in terms of the rate of change of another one. They can be pretty interesting problems. So what I'll do is just work through an example of a related rates problem, and then I'll present a step-by-step -step method for solving such problems. Alright, so here's a typical example of a related rates problem. A plane flies horizontally at an altitude of 5 kilometers and passes directly over a tracking telescope on the ground. When the angle of elevation is pi over 3, the telescope measures that the angle is decreasing at a rate of pi over 6 radians per minute. How fast is the plane traveling at the time of measurement? Well, let me try to show you what this is about. So you have a plane here which is traveling horizontally, just like this, and I have a tracking telescope on the ground that is somehow tracking the plane. So you see, as the plane moves the telescope, the angle between the telescope and the ground is changing. And in fact, what I'm interested in is measuring the velocity of the plane, or in other words, the rate of change of position of the plane, in terms of the rate of change of the angle between the telescope and the ground. So that's a typical related rays problem. How can I solve such a problem? All right, well, the first thing I would do if I'm trying to solve a related rates problem, or for problem solving in general, is to sketch a graph of this situation so that I have a good understanding of what is going on. All right, so I have a little plane here, so let me try to sketch a plane. It looks like something like this. All right, it's moving horizontally. And on the ground, so this is the ground here, I have a telescope that is somehow tracking the plane. What else do I know? So the telescope is tracking the plane. I know that the angle between the telescope and the ground is of course changing as the plane is moving. So I'm going to assign a symbol to the different quantities in the problem. I'm going to call this, um, this angle here theta. And also, what else do I know? I know that the height of the plane is always constant and in fact is 5 kilometers because the plane is flying horizontally. So I'm going to call this h for height, which turns out to be 5 kilometers, and it's a constant. And what else uh, do I want to measure here? Well, I'm going to introduce a new symbol called x, which is the position of the plane with respect to some origin, which I've just put here at the, uh, where the telescope is on the ground. And this position, of course, is changing. What we want, so what are we interested in calculating? What we want is the rate of change of position, or, in other words, the velocity, the horizontal velocity of the plane. But what can we measure? What we can actually measure is not the velocity of the plane, but the rate of change of the angle, right, between the telescope and the ground. This is what we measure. So we want to relate dx dt to d theta dt. So how can we do that? Well, I can certainly write down a relation between the different quantities involved in the problem just by looking at the geometry of the problem. So looking at my picture here, I see right away that the tangent of the angle theta will be the height over the position of the plane. All right, so in other words, x is equal to h over tan theta, which is the same as h times the cotan of theta. But this is great, so now I have a relation between x and theta, so to get a relation between dx dt and d theta dt, all I have to do is take the derivative on both sides with respect to t. Right, so on the left-hand side I get dx dt. On the right-hand side, well, h is a constant, so I can pull it out of the derivative, and I get the derivative of cotan of theta. But then you have to remember that theta is itself a function of t, so I need to use the chain rule here. What I get is h times minus cosecant square of theta times d theta dt. All right, so this is uh, the relation between dx dt and d theta dt that I'm looking for. And now what I have to do is evaluate this relation for the particular angle given to the problem to get the velocity of the plane at that particular point in time. Okay, so how do I do that? Well, I'm interested in the angle theta equals to pi over 3. And I know that at this angle, uh, for this particular angle, then the angle is decreasing at a rate of pi over 6. So that is telling me that the rate of change of the angle is pi over 6, but with a minus sign because it's actually decreasing. So from there, what do I get? I'll get that the rate of change of the position for that particular 
angle will be minus, I can replace h by its value, it's 5 kilometers, then cosecant square of pi over 3 times the rate of change of the angle, which is minus pi over 6 radians per minute. Okay, but what is cosecant square of pi over 3? Well, remember that cosecant of pi over 3 is just 1 over sine of pi over 3. And if you remember your trigonometry, sine of pi over 3 is square root of 3 over 2. So I end up with 2 over square root of 3 for the cosecant of pi over 3. So substituting this back here, so I cancel the minus sign, the right radiant here disappears. I end up with the statement that I get 5 times 2 over square root of 3 square times pi over 6, and the units are kilometers per minute. All right, so I can simplify this a little bit. So I'll get here 20 over 18 times pi kilometers per minute, which, again, I can divide by 2 upstairs and downstairs, I get 10 over 9 pi. That's 4 kilometers per minute, but m probably I'm interested in rewriting this in terms of kilometers per hour, which is a more uh, standard unit for the velocity of the plane. So I'll just multiply here by the number of minutes in an hour, which is 60 minutes per hour. So I end up with the statement here, where I can divide here by 3 upstairs and downstairs. And I end up with the statement that the velocity of the plane at that particular moment of time is 200 pi over 3 kilometers per hour. Fantastic. So this is actually a really nice problem. That's a good example of related rates problem. And it's nice because it's actually realistic. If you really have a telescope like that tracking a plane, to get the velocity of the plane, this is exactly what you would do. You would look at the rate of change of the telescope with the ground and deduce from that the rate of change of the position of the plane or its velocity. All right, so let me end this video with a step-by-step -step strategy to solve related rate problems. First, read the problem carefully. That cannot be overstated. Make sure that you understand what is going on. Second, draw a picture, if possible. Very often, uh, you will get the relation that you need between the different quantities from the picture. Third, introduce notation. So what that means, you want to assign symbols to all quantities uh, that appear in the problem. So in our previous example, I assigned a, a symbol theta for the angle between the telescope and the ground, and a symbol x for the position of the plane, and h for the height of the plane. Fourth, express the given information and desi desired rate of change in terms of derivatives. So in the previous problem, that was d theta dt, the thing that we know, and dx dt, the thing that we want to calculate. Step five, write an equation that relates the various, various quantities of the problem. So in the previous case, that was the tan theta is equal to h over x. Sometimes that might be more complicated. You may actually uh, get two different relations and have to substitute a variable into the other one to get a single relation relating the quantities you're interested in. Yeah. Step six is to differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to t, so that you get a relation between the rates of change. And finally, you substitute the given information into the new equation to solve for the desired rate of change at the particular moment of time that you're interested in.